Um, there, you, you don't, you don't assume that there's. I mean, just like normal wire, we don't assume that there's any resistance in in the inductor. So if then, if we're looking at an RL circuit and we're looking at some long time, so time equals infinity, uh -huh. then the E to the stuff goes right away, and you're just left with the EMF over resistance yeah. for the current going through. But it's but the but it's for the whole loop. So you have to you have to account for the resistance in the whole loop. So it's so not just then become another resistance. In other words, if you're trying to figure out then your your equivalent resistance and you have it branches off there. Where is it branch? Um, I'm looking at activity six point six. Oh okay. Well let's talk about that, because people will have questions about that one too. That's 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 more advanced, so yeah, we'll do this one, we'll do this example real quick, and then we'll do activity 6.6 .6 as well. Okay, so part A um, for problem 3027. We talked about in class, Jordan said that was just I naught times E over R. Since it's whatever the current was in the circuit before the switch changed. And so I got 0.25 amps. B said at time equals 4 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds, find the current. And they said the current through the resistor, but since it's a single loop, whatever the current in the resistor is would be the same as the current through the inductor. So we can use the equation for the inductor. And tau sub L is L over R. Um, so I calculated tau sub L um, first, so 6.6 .6 repeating times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. And then I put this all in to the equation e to the minus 4 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds divided by 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. And I got approximately 1.372 amps, so that's some long repeating number. And then for part C, it says at the same time, um, it wants you to find the voltage drop across the inductor, or the voltage across the inductor, not the voltage drop. That, that's kind of part of the logic of the last part of this question. So. This one had the equation plus I naught R e to the minus T over tau sub L. So this is one where you can hit um, second enter on your calculator and have it repeat the equation from up here. So you don't have to type all this stuff in the exponent all over again. Um, and then you can just add in a multiplied by R in here. So the value I got was 32.9287, yada, yada, yada. And then the question asks about whether the voltage is higher at point B or higher at point C. And the logic I used was whenever we talk about voltage um, across devices, when we've talked about conductors and resistors, sorry, capacitors and resistors before, we always talk about the voltage dropping across those devices. So we know for the resistor in this loop, there's going to be a voltage drop across the resistor. And since that's the only thing in the loop, then whatever elevation drop we have, we have to have a commensurate elevation gain somewhere else, which means if we've got a drop across the resistor, then we're going to have to have the same amount of gain across our um, inductor. So that's going to make point B have a, a voltage of zero. And then at point C, we'd have the voltage of 32 point, what was it, something, 32.9 volts. And then of course point A would also be 32.9 volts. So that was the logic I used to figure that out. The book has a different explanation, which I thought was vaguer. <laughs> you can read it if you don't like my explanation. <laughs> oh, part D is one of these fun problems we just love. So 
So questions so far on A through C? No? All right. D, they want us to find the time when the current is half of the initial current. So our current equation was right here. So the left-hand side, we're looking for when that current equals 1 half I initial. The right-hand side looks the same, I initial e to the minus t over tau sub L. So basically, this is just an algebra problem trying to get t out of the exponent. We've got to remember how to do that. So this goes away. <clears throat> So we have 1 half equals e to the minus t over tau sub L. So what's our trick to get something out of an exponential? Natural log. OK, so I got the O. I think you probably could figure it out from there. That's the one trick you were missing. Yeah. Yeah, so once you get that, then you can solve for t. Um, or just be t equals minus tau sub L ln of 1 half. <clears throat> okay, so that's that problem. And Chris had some questions about activity 6.6. .6. I actually have my own handwritten solution in here, so I probably don't need to do the whole thing on the board for you because it's probably exactly what I wrote here. Um, so, Chris, when it, will you repeat your question for me now? Um, well my question was just like how, so if, if we're using our RL circuit equations, mm -hmm. and we say, okay, well, time is infinity, it's going to be a long time, so the E to the stuff is going to go away, and we're left with the current through the um, inductor is going to be equal to the EMF over resistance. What resistance are we using? Okay. So that's at time equals infinity for the rising current case? Yes, yeah, so part mm -hmm. B, sorry. Yeah. Because, oh, uh, part. Uh, the, second part. the second part of part A? Yeah. Okay. So, um, So at, um, at time equals infinity, the, um, the inductor, like at time equals zero, it's going to block the current completely. And so, you know, this is our, our circuit where you, you could potentially have current go down this path or this path. But at time equals zero, the inductor says, nah, -uh, not allowing anything to go here. So all the current is going to go this way. But at time equals infinity, the inductor says, well, we're finally to steady state current. I'm no longer going to fight it. And so and there's essentially no resistance at, at time equals infinity. And this is, this is sort of a trick of the trade. And it's not anything you'd get from an equation, but it's just from, I guess, doing boatloads of circuits. But strange as it sounds, if there's zero resistance here, all the current will go down this path, and none of the current will go down this path. And the logical explanation is it takes the path of least resi resistance, but it's like nothing will go down this path at all. It just says, man, if I can go down a path with no resistance, we're all going down that path. And it's like this path doesn't even exist. So then would the resistance just be R1? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like this, this branch isn't even there anymore. And then your R1 would be the only resistance. Mm -hmm. But it's good to solve for the current in the rest of the loop because you'll need it for part B. So at time equals zero or time equals infinity, that's your steady state current in the rising current case, and you'll need to know what that is. That's your I naught in this equation when you get to the falling current case. And so then you've just got the loop rule um, with this is this acts like a wire. So it, it's essentially equivalent to just 
having the battery over here and R1 and then nothing. So that's, that's your steady state current before you flip the switch. So that's the I not you'd solve is just the, the battery in R1. Yeah. Good question. Uh, most of this, most of this problem isn't so much equations like this problem is all the equations. Can you deal with the equations? And then activity 6.6 .6 is like all logic. Can you logic your way through the problem? And both have merit, both make good test problems. So ask me your questions if you don't understand. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> that's all I got for today. Um, that's the end of the lecture. So, the yeah. The, v, the VL and the VR, mm -hmm. is that leaving the, the, the circuit and the one is returning or left and right? Oh, no, resistor versus inductor. So this, this situation is the, like with the problem 3027, this would be your voltage drop across your resistor. And then this is your voltage rise across the inductor. And that's why they're equal and opposite, because they're the only things left in the circuit once the battery's disconnected. Nothing? OK. Um, so the rest of class is open lab time. You guys can use it to build your vehicles and prepare for next week's race day. We're gonna do the race at the very beginning of class. And I don't have office hours here on Monday because it's a university holiday. Um, so if you're hoping to come in Monday and work on it, I won't be here. We'll go, to Go to my house. Well, I'm gonna have office hours at a coffee shop in Beaverton. I'll email you guys that um, if you, if you wanna come in and get homework help. Um, I do have class Wednesday evening. If you need to come in and get supplies or something, there will be another time during the week next week that you could come in this classroom. Or you can always email Richard Ellis if you need to get in. Um, but you guys have, well, until you want to leave to use what's in here. Um, I'll stick around for a little while. I got to go because my daughter's sick. But I'll stick around for a little while if no you guys have questions. We will. <laughs> well, I mean, if people have like pressing questions they've been waiting all week.